seems like it was just yesterday that I was heading out to the Apple store to pick up my very first rolly block and then not actually buying one. Today, we're gonna be taking a ride to the Apple store to check out this new controller, MIDI controller type thing called Rolly Blocks. Back from the Apple store, no Rolly in hand. I guess I just wasn't feeling it. Because back then, Rolly Blocks were not all that they are now. I think Rolly has put in a lot of time and effort into improving their products, even creating new products like the Rolly Seaboard Block, which is one of my favorite MIDI keyboards, previously one of the only mini MIDI keyboards to actually have MPE, MIDI Polyphonic Expression, until now. Now Rolly has developed the Lumi, which as you can see right off the bat is a really brilliant looking keyboard. It lights up, very exciting, but it's also got things like individual note pitch bending, after touch, some MPE functionality, and Bluetooth capability. There's a lot packed into this little keyboard, and today I want to talk about whether or not you should pick yourself up a Lumi. It's the right MIDI keyboard for you. Today's video is going to be sponsored by Skillshare, but we'll talk about that later. In full disclosure, that Rolly did send me two Lumi units for review, but they're not sponsoring this video. So let's get into talking about whether or not the Lumi is the right MIDI keyboard for you. But first, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Tatro, your electronic music mentor. Okay, so on the surface, the Rolly Lumi might look like a pretty bare bones keyboard, other than the fact that it lights up like this, and I don't know any other keyboard that does that, but no pads, no knobs, just keys, only 24 keys at that, and we'll talk about why in a little bit. So what's the hype? I guess most of what makes Lumi special is all happening under the hood, so to speak. So right off the bat, let me just show you that we can scroll through a few different modes on Lumi, and these are not just aesthetic modes. These are actually modes that you can set in the software. The Rolly Dashboard app gives you control over what type of functionality each one of these modes gets, and also like what type of display it's showing on the keys. So for instance, right now, I'm in one of the modes that is showing me a C major scale, with the root or the C on the keyboard being illuminated red to let me know that that's the root. I could set this to different scales within the dashboard app. So let's say we want to go to D and now all the notes in the key of D major are being illuminated and we can select all the different notes as well as a bunch of different scales. So that's one functionality of the dashboard app. You can set it up to learn different scales. Cool. Other functionality here in the dashboard app also includes the ability to enable MPE, which is super unique, and the ability to enable pressure and pitch bend for each individual mode. And you can see that between the four modes I have on my keyboard, I have different combinations of those things. One mode has both pitch bend and pressure enabled. Mode two has only pressure. Mode four has only pitch bend and mode three has none of it. So I can just play it like a normal keyboard without any of that happening but maybe you wanna know what pitch bend and pressure actually do. And to check that out, let's take a look at Rolly's Equator Synth, which is an MPE compatible synth that helps us take full advantage of these features. All right, so here I'm in my first mode where pressure and pitch bend are both enabled. And some of these features really shine through when you're trying to emulate different acoustic sounds like strings. So there's individual pitch bend for each note. That's a pretty natural hand gesture. It's what you would expect if you wanted to, you know, bend the pitch. And then let me switch to a pad sound to demonstrate what pressure does. So here you can actually see in Equator on the keyboard, as I play a certain note and I apply more pressure, we're seeing that little purple dot expand because it's sensing that pressure. And it's really transforming the sound as we do that. See that it's happening per note. So this is a level of expression that you don't get with most keyboards. The only keyboard I could probably compare this to is Rolly's Seaboard Block, which I have, or you know Rolly's other Seaboard line. I haven't used another mini MIDI keyboard that has both pitch bend on each note 
and the pressure sensitivity that the Lumi has. So those two features obviously set it apart from other mini MIDI keyboards, but there is one other feature that I also really, really enjoy, and that is the fact that we can completely unplug Lumi and we can connect it via Bluetooth. Now for Windows users, I assume this will be different, but on Mac, that's as easy as going into your audio MIDI setup, going to your MIDI studio, clicking Bluetooth, and finding your Lumi. And suddenly we are connected via Bluetooth, just like as if we were connected via a cable. Access to all the same features, but now it's just no wires. Which I think is super convenient. And a lot of the times I will gravitate towards using the Lumi. You all have probably seen me use the Lumi a lot if you follow my channel or my other social media. And that's because if I just want to grab a keyboard and start making music, I don't want to have to worry about finding the right USB cable or the right dongle or being tethered to my laptop. And Bluetooth allows me to be free of all of that, which is really great. So even though Bluetooth is one of my favorite features on the Lumi, it's not 100% perfect. I get the occasional dropped out note or a slightly delayed note, which can really throw off your timing when you're recording musical ideas. However, it doesn't happen often enough that I don't use the controller. It, it's fairly rare. I get zero dropouts, zero delayed notes, nothing when connected via USB. So if I wanted to be completely safe or I was using this during a live performance, I would of course connect it via a cable. But for the everyday, just hanging around, writing musical ideas, making music in Ableton Live, Bluetooth works perfectly for me and the convenience trumps the minor you know, error that might occur every now and then. So Rolly actually put together a full learning system that the Lumi is completely integrated in that can help you learn keyboard. But before we get into that, I want to talk about a different way you could learn an instrument or a DAW or another creative skill with Skillshare, the sponsor for today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They have thousands of inspiring classes where you can learn music, music production, video production, photography, and more. Skillshare is super affordable at just under $10 a month, but today for the first 1,000 of my subscribers to use the link in the description down below, you can get yourself a free trial of a Skillshare Premium membership. And with Skillshare Premium, you get access to all of the classes on Skillshare. It doesn't matter if you want to learn piano, learn Ableton Live, or learn music theory within Ableton Live. If you're in your home studio and you're trying to get your recordings to sound professional, I would highly recommend checking out Young Guru's How to Mix Your Music course. I actually took that course and it really helped me improve the sound of my mixes and got them to sound just a little bit more professional. So no matter what MIDI keyboard you have or what DAW you use or what kind of music you want to make, take advantage of the free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership using the link in the description down below. The first 1,000 of my subscribers will get that free trial and by doing that it also helps out the channel. But for now, let's get back into talking about the Lumi. All right, so you can tell Roly put a lot of thought into learning with Lumi because they've developed this whole app which helps you learn in a few different ways. You've got this Guitar Hero style learning where the notes are coming down at you and you're able to play on the illuminated keys which show you what note you're supposed to play. And then built into the app also you can learn popular songs, you can learn with notation, you know, the more traditional way. There's exercises, you can learn chords, and you can learn melodies. Do I think that this is the definitive way for learning piano? Probably not, especially if you've only got a single 24 key keyboard. But for those of you out there that wanna learn enough keyboarding skill to be able to create your own beats or your own productions, or to at least recreate your favorite songs and your favorite melodies, the Lumi app will help you a lot. It actually helps you to understand more traditional music theory and chords. So you might not end up playing super advanced Mozart pieces, but you will have a better understanding of the keyboard in general, which will help you in your productions. Now I mentioned it only being a 24 key keyboard. And I also want to mention that that's just with one Lumi. Let's scoot Lumi over here for a moment and add the second Lumi. 
So Rolly's ecosystem of being able to attach different blocks to each other really pays off here because if you do have two Lumis, now you end up with a full 48 key keyboard. And you can see that as I switch through modes on one keyboard, it is adjusting modes, recognizing it as essentially one big keyboard. And you could go ahead and add another Lumi on top of that. This is an expensive way to get your hands on a 48 key keyboard. There are much less expensive 48 key keyboards out there. However, if all the features that I've already talked about, pressure, pitch bend, MPE, the learning system of the Lumi app, if all that appeals to you, it might be worth having two so you can at least start learning some two-handed pieces. Not only can you connect two Lumis together, you can connect any other Rolly blocks you might have, and they integrate really well when using them with Rolly Studio Player or Rolly Studio Drums. Let's just hear what this sounds like as a stock, so I'm just gonna play one note. Now all of these layers are going at their own, with their own settings. can see on the screen that it's playing notes beyond just our keyboard but it's actually giving us a visual representation of all that which is really cool you hear that bend come through So with Lumi, traditional keyboard players might have an issue with the travel on the keyboard. So it's actually much shorter travel, that is the time it takes from when you press to when you get to the bottom of the key bed. And what I found when I try to play very lightly, very softly on a velocity sensitive keyboard or just on a piano in general, I can play very, very lightly and just tap the key so that I feel the bottom of the key bed. But what you're seeing now is me pressing a key and I am feeling the bottom of the key bed. I'm feeling that hit at the bottom, but I'm not always getting a note when I feel that. So on most traditional keyboards, more traditional keyboards, I would actually hear a note even when playing this softly. However, I do need to apply just slightly more pressure to get sound from the Lumi. So it might be a little bit of an adjustment there. For regular playing, I have no problem, but if I'm really trying to get those sensitive sounds, I really have to adjust how I play. Another little quirk of the Lumi. In terms of travel and portability, you can't really beat it. The wireless Bluetooth functionality really makes it that much more travel friendly because you don't have to worry about forgetting a cable or forgetting a dongle. Rolly also sent me this nice snap case, which also helps you stand up the iPad so you can use it in conjunction with an app. And I've used this with other iOS apps, I should say, using Bluetooth functionality on my iPhone, on my iPad, and it works really well. But traveling with the Lumi, I've used it both with and without the snap case, throwing it into my backpack, and I have had zero issues in terms of durability. The one issue I would say is maybe aesthetically, but I have brought this out into some dirty places outside, you know, where there's lots of dirt or sand. And I can actually tell which of these Lumis went outside and which one didn't because this one is the one that went outside and has the has little thing under this key right here. I don't know if just a piece of dirt or dust got in there. Um, it doesn't affect the functionality at all of the keyboard. It only affects the aesthetic and that's really my fault for taking it outside and having it on the ground and, you know, doing stuff like that with it. So I don't blame Rolly for that really at all. So all of that said, who do I think Lumi is for? Well, first of all, style wise, if you're a person who really cares about style and aesthetic, and that is the kind of thing that inspires you to create and will actually help you create more. This is a very stylish keyboard. I don't know any other keyboard that has such an amazing aesthetic like this. Do I think that that's a valuable purchasing decision point? I don't know. You'll have to decide for yourself. But functionality wise, pressure, individual note, pitch bend, MPE, and Bluetooth four features that you should really, really consider that other mini MIDI keyboards tend to not 
have. It sets it apart from the rest. If you're somebody who is learning keyboard, but you don't want to necessarily learn piano, like on a full piano keyboard, you want to learn some basic melodies on a mini MIDI keyboard, the Lumi app is integrated in a great way and it's tailored just for this little keyboard. And then you can also add additional ones later if you want to learn more full parts. So if any of that speaks to you, the Lumi is for you. And the fact that it has features that a lot of mini MIDI keyboards do not have, I would say justifies the price, even though it is fairly expensive in comparison to other keyboards, it has features that many other keyboards don't have. So that's something you have to consider. I personally love the Lumi. I don't utilize the learning functionality as much as other people. However, all the features that I talked about that are unique to this keyboard, including Bluetooth especially, are things that make me use this keyboard a lot. Also, you all know I'm a video creator. I create visual content that's also music and beat making content. So this just makes sense for me. It's visually stunning and I get to make music with it. Also as a learning tool, right? If I say I'm playing a C major chord, and now you can see on the screen the keys that are lighting up, C, E, G. That's really easy to see for a student if I'm teaching digitally. So that's another pro for me as well. But what do you think? Please let me know in a comment down below. Are you interested in Lumi? Are you going to pick one up? Are you turned off by some of the quirks? I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up because it helps a lot. And if you don't already know, I am streaming live on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And I would love to have you join me on a live stream where we make music, I do track reviews, tell me what to sample, where you guys can tweet funny videos at me and I'll sample them. Uh, it's a good time. Hit the join button if you want to become a member of the channel, get certain perks like free sample packs, join the Discord, etc. And if you don't want to do that, at least subscribe to the channel for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. Don't forget that the Skillshare link is in the description down below. You can get yourself that free premium membership, but also it helps out the channel when you do that as well. So at the very least, consider it. But for now, thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.